What is going on everybody? It's DJ Rips. We have a brand new investor series video where today I'll be going over which sports you should be the heaviest in going into 2023. But first we just have to establish a very important rule I go by in investing and that is why you should not be one of those cave diving dip buyers, the buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip type of people. Why you should instead be buying into strength, the strongest of the strong players in sports. And let's get into why that is ideal. The first and most obvious reason why you shouldn't buy a dip is that it's not always guaranteed that whatever you're buying is going to recover. I mean, that should be obvious. That's the number one reason. But number two, just as important, is that when something is dipping, for example, you buy a LeBron James card and it dips 50% from when you bought it. Now that card has to go up 100% for you to be at break even. So just imagine if something goes down even further and further and further, the percentage that it has to go up for you to be at break even is much larger. So just keep that in mind. When something is dipping and trending downwards, math is moving against you. So here's an example in the stock market of a stock that people were buying at around $75. And that stock would dip and then people would quickly sell it the second it got back to 75 because the sad reality is everyone has a huge ego. Nobody wants to be at a loss. And when they are at a loss, to protect their ego, they'll get out as soon as they can. So the more losers there are in a card, a sport, whatever, anything in investing, the more people that are going to try to get out at break even when they bought it the first time, which could have been at at, uh, at the draft when a player made the playoffs. If a player had a really good game, you know, no one is really unique in that sense. Everyone's buying at a certain time when a major milestone is reached, and then if it dips, people are going to be looking to get out at break even to protect their ego. And the more a stock dips, the more points of resistance will be made. So anytime a player is playing really well, it would not really matter because people are going to want to get out at break even when they bought it if they are down a lot, for example. Like, say a guy like Zach Wilson. You see, so many people have bought into his hype, his cards, and they are panicking right now, and they want to get out. They want to sell it at the first time it starts to go up, or he has a big game, he gets traded. People are going to be selling and flooding the market because they want to protect their ego. They don't want to admit they were wrong. So here's an example in sports cars instead of a stock. Here's Luka Doncic. As you can see at the beginning of the chart, there's a nice bump there for whatever reason. A lot of people bought there. It dipped after that initial rise, and then it went back up, and people sold immediately to get out at break even. And then you could see it went into a downtrend and just kept dipping and dipping and dipping. And when a stock or player is going down, and more people are in the red, it's going to be harder for that to reverse and get back and break its all-time highs because so many people are in the red. They want to get out at break-even and then take that money and put it on a new horse, a fresh horse that they think could go really high. Now here's the inverse of that argument, and this is why you should buy into strength. Here is just a quick image of the stock market from 2008 to right before the pandemic. Just an insane, strong bull run. Any little dip gets immediately bought up. And why a strong trending market is better is because everyone is profitable. No one's panicking. Everyone's calm, cool, collected. 
their player is playing well. More and more people are seeing that. They're hopping onto the train, and it's trending upwards. There's no reason to sell. There's no reason for everyone to sell because everyone's in the green. No one wants to get out of break even. There's no ego to protect. And fear is a lot stronger than greed. And just like trying to time the bottom of a market is impossible, trying to time the top of a market is impossible. So you might as well just say, hey, the trend is your friend. Remember that. The trend is your friend. And if something's trending upwards and showing strength, the odds are that is going to continue. So here's a real extreme <laughs> um, example of that. This is Blockbuster stock versus Netflix over a five-year span. And I'm going to get to sports card examples, just sort of establishing this uh, framework first. And you can see here, Blockbuster in blue. Every, it just kept trending downwards, lower highs. Everyone's screaming, buy the dip, buy the dip. It'll come back, and it never does. And then you see Netflix just absorbing Blockbuster, absorbing all that money, and trending upwards and upwards and upwards and just swallowing Blockbuster whole. So just a quick example of that. And then now let's go to the sports card examples to apply this new found knowledge. So here's Card Ladder's overview of the last two years of every sport in the sports card market. You could see football pretty clearly was the biggest market and is now having the biggest decline. So we're going to try to find out where that money is going since football was such a monster. And that's a lot of money that's either leaving the market, which a lot of it is, but a lot of it is also being reinvested into the market. So now I'm going to try to figure out where that money is going to. So very interesting. This is plotting the major sports starting at February 20th of this year when football peaked. So as you can see, money is overall leaving the market. Uh, basketball and football, the biggest declines. Soccer as well. You know, everyone wanted to buy soccer before the World Cup, and then everyone wanted to cash in when it started and sell their soccer, and it just flooded the market and did exactly the opposite. So you see hockey and baseball are by far the strongest. And remember the rules I said. What is the strongest that has the least amount of people in the red, the most people in, in the green that are profitable, that are least likely to sell, that is where you want to put your money. So when this whole entire sports card market turns, for whatever reason, and people are buying again, everything is going to rise. But the sports where people are mostly in the green are going to rise the sharpest and the fastest because no one has a reason to sell. Everyone is profitable. Whereas people that are in football and basketball, the weakest sectors are going to be trying to get out at break even all along the way up, trying to protect their ego. And that's just how it works in the stock market. The stocks that were the strongest and held their own in a bear market turned up the fastest when the entire market at large went bullish again. So remember that Netflix and Blockbuster chart. And here it is in sports card terms. Mahomes and LeBron over the last year have just been hemorrhaging money and a lot of that money leaving the sports card market obviously isn't being reinvested back. You know, inflation's bad, gas prices, food prices are absurd. People need that money, but the people that are reinvesting it back into the sports card market are buying baseball. And here's Shohei Otani and some random hockey guy that I think is really good. Rasmus Dahlin, if I'm even saying that right. So as basketball and football are hemorrhaging money, baseball and hockey are gaining, or at least holding up pretty well. And remember, the trend is your friend. And also remember, when the whole market turns, the strongest sectors, the strongest players, are the ones that are going to rise the most, because everyone's in a profit like Otani here, everyone that has bought Otani since he started playing is in the profit. There's no reason to sell it. There's no ego to protect. 
people are going to continue to buy Otani, especially when the market eventually turns and people are optimistic on sports cards again. The people that are holding Otani and Dolan are in the profit, and people that are new to the stock market and new to the sports card market are going to buy those players no matter what, and everyone will be in the profit, everyone will be green. Whereas the people that have been dying to get out of LeBron and dying to get out of Mahomes are going to sell at break even and just flood the market constantly. And it's going to have a way harder time going up. And as good as Mahomes and LeBron have been, their cards have been just insanely overvalued compared to other sports. People were just buying and buying and buying because they had extra money and they weren't paying attention to valuations or a fair price. So just a quick recap, you want to buy the strongest players in the strongest sport. You want to see who is defying the downward market because when the market turns bullish again, the players with the most people in the profit will rise the quickest and the fastest, whereas the weakest where more people are in the red will rise the slowest because so many people will try to break even and protect their ego and it will just flood the market with cards. And the strongest, in my opinion, going into 2023, the place where I will be putting most of my money is baseball and hockey. And that'll do it. So next video, I'll discuss some of the players I think are the best to invest in right now for the coming year and yeah we'll have some fun with this i know these videos aren't my most popular and it's a bit long but i hope you were able to take something away and enjoy it and i really appreciate it if you watch for this long even on 2x speed which i hope you guys did so thank you all and take care Dejan rips with his fingertips.